Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here. I released a popular video called Shader Caches in You, which discusses what shader cache files are and what they do, but more importantly, why you should want them. But as usual, there is more to the story hiding beneath the surface, and today we'll expose it all. We may even have an answer as to why you get so damn many updates. All this and more is coming up, so stick around. If you're not familiar with what shader caches are, we're not going to cover the basics again in this video. Check the upper right corner for that video, and once you're done with that, come on back here and we'll dig into the bowels of these things. There are three areas that I want to cover in this 201 level video. Shader cache validity and advanced concepts, how the community contributes shaders, and finally, possibly some reasons why every time you turn on your deck, you're getting shaders, even though many of us do not. Let's get to it. Shaders are built around many different things, including game version, video driver version, Proton versions, OS versions, and finally, the existence and validity of existing shaders are taken into consideration when Valve is trying to decide if your shaders are good or need to be refreshed or possibly just augmented with additionally available shaders that were not available before. One new thing I learned about shader caches is that they can be impacted by cross-device sharing of games. While data on this is sparse, if you're a cross-platform player, you could be a victim here. If you play the same games on both your deck and your gaming PC, shader cache inconsistencies can certainly trigger refreshes more frequently. Changing Proton versions, aka playing Wheel of Protons, can also cause issues with shader caches. When any of these things change or don't line up properly, the shader cache is considered stale or invalidated, meaning it needs to be purged be and paid. rebuilt, or the pre-compiled ones need to be redeployed from Valve. At the very least, corrupt ones need to be replaced and missing ones need to be redeployed to your deck. Basically, any moving targets in these areas are gonna cause your shader caches to be invalidated frequently. Many people will simply turn off pre-compiled shaders because they're tired of updates. But as mentioned in previous videos, compiled shaders shouldn't be shut off merely because you find them a nuisance, especially for certain games and situations. Since you cannot choose which games should get it and which ones should not, it's all or nothing. Finally, the last thing that falls into the advanced category is that shader cache folders have a secondary use, the storage of transcoded videos. For a simple indie game like A Hat in Time, this transcoding could take up 12 gigabytes of shader cache space, shader cache space, all by itself. Check the video in the upper right for more information about transcoded videos and why they're important. The good news is these videos can be divorced from shader cache downloads. Even if you turn off pre-compiled shader delivery, the transcoded videos come down as part of the game download. Unfortunately, people are largely unaware that a simple, small indie game could eat up tons of space internally if the video playback codecs for that little game cannot be played back on the deck and are replaced by the transcoded ones. Some people know that compiled shaders are crowdsourced, but few know the details as to how it all works. For big game releases, Valve appears to often have pre-compiled shaders ready for download. The most famous story of this surrounds Elden Ring, which was gloriously playable on day one, thanks to Valve having at least the first few hours of gameplay shaders ready for delivery with the game. This actually made the deck one of the best places to play this game, regardless of hardware. But this isn't always the case, and due to the ever-changing nature of game files, drivers, OS updates, and all the other things we mentioned above, Shaders are always in flux. That's why Valve turns to crowdsourcing to make the magic happen. You're probably thinking, hey Shane, I don't remember opting into sharing my shader cache files with Valve. And if you look at the settings regarding shader caches on the deck, you won't see any way to opt out of it specifically. Although the verbiage has become better over time. Unfortunately, Valve is being a little sneaky on this one. By default, you are opted into receiving shader caches from Valve which honestly I don't have a problem with since in my opinion, it is a very strong selling point for the system above and beyond what a different uh, say Windows handheld has. But most people like to know when data is moving from their system 
to another. And if you're receiving shaders, you're also providing them. I want to assure you that shader caches do not house personal data. There is no reason not to share them unless you're concerned about quoted or metered bandwidth, which most people are not. It is worth noting that shaders are usually not super huge and due to everyone kicking in. Valve doesn't need all of yours all at once. Think of it sort of as a, a torrent that one that your ISP won't send you a nasty gram about, where everybody shares a little bit to populate the bigger end result. So now you have the data that you need to make a responsible decision. Let me show you the option to turn it off. Unfortunately, Valve doesn't differentiate between sending and receiving. So if you go and disable pre-compiled shader caches, you will no longer be receiving them, but you're also not contributing. And I beg you to reconsider. Crowdsourcing doesn't work if the crowd isn't participating. This feature isn't given enough credit nor enough publicity, and that's one of the reasons why I tackle these types of subjects. Pre-compiled shaders are a gift, not a curse. Now, the last thing I wanted to discuss was the concept of why some people seem to get waylaid with shader updates constantly, while other people do not, even when they share a similar taste in games and or genre. I have some ideas, and I would love to hear in the comments below if you're one of these people and if any of these ideas ring true regarding your use of the Steam Deck. Before we look at the list, I would recommend one more video discussing updates in general and why you may get a lot of them, and it isn't always shaders. Again, the link above and below on that topic. Based on the information above, some things on this list are gonna make a lot more sense now as to why you may be a candidate, candidate, for more shader updates than the rest of us. Updates, right? We talked earlier that game updates, video driver updates, OS updates can all invalidate your shader caches. Usually all the games go at the same time too in the case of driver and OS updates. Therefore, if you're on an OS channel that gets updates frequently with many changes, such as beta or even worse, the preview channel, your shader caches are more frequently going to be casualties of war. Now remember, some games get updates almost constantly, while others rarely, if ever, get them. Live service games like Overwatch 2 thrive on something new and different as frequently as possible to keep players coming back and buying stuff. There are also games that frequently benefit the most from pre-compiled shader caches because stuttering and hiccuping in game well, it can lead you to getting perished far easier. If you want to see this in action, check out Overwatch 2 without any shader caches and see just how difficult it is to play that game competitively. By the time you react to the Widow call out, you're already dead. So if you're on a non-stable branch, frequently play new games, or engage in a lot of live service games that are likely to get frequent updates, expect to be downloading new shaders a lot more frequently. There are notorious games out there, too, that are even more susceptible. Baldur's Gate 3, Elden Ring, Cyberpunk, and others that frequently change shader structures more frequently than other games do. There's also something to be said for the concept of keeping your deck storage succinct and only keeping around games you are actively playing. Obviously, less games installed, less shader caches around to be invalidated, and therefore less updates and interruptions. If you're a proton flipper, and I'm vehemently against this personally, as I believe 99% of the time, Valve makes a better choice than we do, and you like to try out these new versions of proton, flip-flop between experimental and hotfix, or you're constantly chasing something with GE or other custom protons, expect your shader cache to be a mess every time you do it, and more downloads are coming your way in the future. Well, this video has been long enough, so let's recap and call it a day. Shader caches are community-funded cache files that keep your games running fast and smooth. They can contain videos as well. Opting out of pre-compiled shader caches does not impact getting those transcoded videos. The more chaotic your deck is in terms of updates, OS channels, game updates, types of games, and other factors, you are going to get downloads more frequently than a deck on the stable branch with older non-live service games. And if you share your gaming between deck and PC, there are more chances that your cache will be invalidated and require more frequent updates. You can opt out of getting and contributing caches, but transcoded videos are coming your way if the game requires them. Again, I'd love your thoughts on all of this. And if you're a chaotic deck owner, if you see tons of updates on your shaders, 
leave a comment down below. As always, if this video was to your liking, share with a buddy, like, subscribe, uh, elect to get notifications from the channel, blah, 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 so you don't miss any future videos. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.